get involved, and they're giving their professional opinion about this matter. And that professional opinion is that the proposition that the sun is the center of the world uh, and that the earth is going around the sun are propositions that are, in view of the scriptures, heretical. The vote was 11 to nothing. The hypothesis that the earth moved was foolish and absurd. The belief that the sun was the center of the world was a matter of formal heresy. Cardinal Bellarmine would use his meeting with Galileo to deliver the edict. Galileo will be told formally not to hold and defend the Copernican position. And what's more, in the decision it is stated that should Galileo refuse this order, he will be silenced. Galileo is forced to turn his back on Copernicus, whose work is added to the index of prohibited books. And the theologians were merely thinking of prohibiting Copernicus's book. I held it to be true. Then those learned gentlemen actually did prohibit the work, declaring its opinions to be false and contrary to scripture. Knowing, as I do, that it always behooves us to accept the decisions of the authorities, guided as they are by a higher insight than my humble brain could ever attain to. I declared my former defense to be merely a poetical conceit, a dream, a fancy of my own. Amir Galileo had been certain that he could turn the church to his new astronomy. But instead, matters had become much worse. With the stroke of a quill, the church had banned Copernicus and for now, muzzled Italy's greatest scientist. If there were to be a struggle between religion and science, Religion had won the first round. Only months after Galileo's collision with the church, his oldest daughter embraced one of its most ancient rituals. Renouncing her worldly possessions, she surrendered her given name, Virginia, and chose for herself the name Sister Maria Celeste. By tradition, a name whispered to her by God. Vuoi consacrarti e serenamente come sposa al nostro Signore Gesù Cristo? Sì, lo voglio. I think she chose her name for him. Maria Celeste, because he was so interested in the stars. Of course, it's not an out-of-the-realm name for a nun. It could be chosen completely in a religious context and would still make sense. But she was so clever that I feel certain that that was her intent. Questa tua serva, sorella nostra. Io, suor Maria Celeste. All'ode gloria di Dio, mi affido con tutto il cuore a questa famiglia religiosa. In nome del Padre, e dei figli, e dei Spiriti Santi. Amen. Although their lives were difficult, many of the intelligent young women actually chose the convent because they knew that would be the place they could think and write, and they had more status in society than they might have had, even as married women with children.
Galileo was a good Catholic, so he had no interest in fighting the church. What he was about from the very beginning of his public support of Copernicus was to bring the church to an understanding of the theory and of the theory's complete lack of threat to the church. If the church struck a defensive posture about something that looked like it had a very good chance of being true in fact, the church would face embarrassment. Galileo vented his frustration in outspoken letters to close friends and supporters. To ban Copernicus when his doctrine is daily reinforced with many new observations seems in my judgment to be a contravention of the truth, hiding and suppressing her when she's most clearly and plainly revealed. Despite the advances of Copernicus, within his theory a couched mystery so sublime and concepts so profound that hundreds and hundreds of the most acute minds have still not pierced them. Cardinal Bellarmine may have slammed the door on Copernicus, but his philosophy left one small opening for Galileo to seize upon. Cardinal Bellarmine had argued that the church can change its opinion, but only if there is real proof that the earth goes around the sun. The church did not accept Galileo's claim that the phases of Venus proved a sun-centered universe. So he set out to find physical proof that the earth was moving. From his younger days in Venice, where the water level could rise or fall many feet in a day, Galileo had developed an interest in the tides. Just as water sloshes back and forth in a swinging container, Galileo reasoned that the earth, as a giant vessel spinning on its axis, might cause the seas to rise and fall twice a day. He believed that the tidal motions of a body of water like the Mediterranean might offer proof that the earth moved. To make the water contained in the basin of the Mediterranean behave as it does surpasses my imagination. Perhaps that of anyone else who enters more than superficially into these reflections. Some say Aristotle after observing the tides for a long time from some cliffs, plunged into the sea in a fit of despair and willfully destroyed himself for the mystery of them. Up to this point, he's been very bold. In 1616, he had, in fact, circulated, given to some cardinals, um, a, a tract on the tides in which he argued that this is actual physical proof that the earth moves. He does think enthusiastically, think passionately, think that he has the key here to prove, to demonstrate the earth's motions by turning to the uh, motions of the tides. Now, we know that that is in fact incorrect, but uh, he thought he had it. For once, Galileo's intuition failed him. Although a link between the tides and the phases of the moon had been observed for centuries, Galileo rejected the idea. For him, the suggestion that the moon could influence events on Earth smacked of astrology or the occult. The search for physical proof of the Earth's rotation would take another 200 years. I don't know. What a beautiful expression that is. So candid in its honesty. Much better than the occult explanations offered by certain philosophers. The number of people that can reason well is much smaller than those that can reason badly. If reasoning were like hauling rocks, then several reasoners might be better than one, but reasoning isn't like hauling rocks. It's like, it's like racing, or a single galloping Barbary steed easily outruns a hundred wagon-pulling horses. <laughs> <laughs>